Welcome to Pixel Composer tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm gonna go through a different way you can manipulate node, node junction, and node connection. Because there's a lot you can do with a node graph. There's a lot of feature, a lot of hot keys. So it can be overwhelming and it can cause confusion when you press like random key and things start to happen. So here I'm gonna make sure that you understand the basic of node manipulation first before we go delve deeper into more aspect of the software. Also, this tutorial is being made on 1.20.0.5. So this is a fifth patch because during the recording, there are some bugs that I found that I fixed. So make sure that you're on the latest version first before following this tutorial. So in the previous video, I already talked about a different way you can create a node in this software. The first way is to right click on an empty space on the graph panels to bring up this add node dialog, right? And I show you that on my homepage, I have a bunch of nodes here on ferrets. And to do that is pretty simple. You just click on the star icon in front of the node here to add it to favorites. But if you are on a grid view, you will not be able to see the star. You have to right click on the node and then press add to favorites. You can also add node from the top bar and to edit what content, what node to show up on the top bar, you can right click, go to edit top bar and it will show you this dialog. Item on the left is your current top bar and on the right side here is all the possible button in the software and there are a lot. So you can go to the category here, set it to node to only show the addable node. And you can also type in the node here to search for the node that you want and simply drag it to the left side to add node to the top bar. And next is when you're adding a new node, you may notice that there are this table show up. This is what I call a node card. So when you just start adding the node itself, you're going to see that the outline here is actually yellow. And it means that you can use this card to modify the node properties without having to go through all the options in the inspector panel here. So for the shape node, for example, you can press E to change the shape type. You can set rendering option. You can also change the size by pressing the number directly. So you can press five to set it to 0 0.5 or half the size. But when you press left click, you will apply all that change. The code will disappear and it's just gonna be a normal node. You can also rename the node by going to the inspector panel here. On the node name here is actually a text block. That you can click on and then type it to anything you want. You can also press the node on the graph panel and then press F2 to rename it that way as well. When you right click on the node, you will see you have all options for the node color that you can change. And there are different node view that you can set to. So the common one here is you can press H to hide the preview and make the node smaller. It can be really useful when you have a larger, more complex node graph. You can press M to toggle parameter. So if you have any input property visible here, it will show up on the graph panels. And then you can adjust this right from the graph panel itself. If you don't want to remember the hotkey, you can also right click. It will be an option here, toggle preview and toggle parameters. Then let's talk about node deletion. Now well, you can delete the node by simply select the node you want and then press delete. But you will notice that the software will try to reconnect a broken connection. But if you don't want that behavior, you can also do that by pressing shift delete instead. It will delete the node and all the connection associated with it. Another thing you can do is you can replace the node content without deleting the connection. You then right click, go to the replace node. It will bring the same node dialog here, but with this cyan border. So now you can type in the node that you want and it will try to replace the node while keeping all the connection. And as I try, because in some node, it can have a different set of input output altogether that make the reconnection impossible. It will just ignore those connection. Now on the inspector panel here, I told you that this panel will show you all the property inside the node, but there are also a second page of this on up here. You may have to scroll up to the topmost of the panel here you will see there are property page and there are setting page. And the setting page here is where you can control the node setting for stuff like the node size. You can also set a more, I would say, meta properties, stuff like the color depth of the node or the texture interpolation can be also be found here. There's also a third page, which is for locking. Uh, it's not really important to so just ignore those. Now in the previous video, I told you about how to import image by dragging it to the graph panels here. But you can also drag an image file directly to an already existed node. Like in this case, I'm dragging a different image file and then I drag it on the node here. It will have this two tip and then this green border. It says drop all node. If you release the left mouse button, it will replace the content inside instead of creating a new image node. So I think most of the import node, like the image importer, uh, file importers support this feature. Then let's talk about the junction. Most of the junction will be hidden by default. You have to go to the property here and then toggle visibility to make it show up for the junction that already have some connection. In this example, the surface in is already connected to something. You cannot hide it because it still have to show the connection for you. Just like the node itself, you can also change the color of your junction. 
So in the inspector panel here, you can right click and then set the color you want and it will change the color of that junction. Now the colors and the shape of the junction reflect the data type of the properties. So if you change the color, it can cause some confusion. But especially when you like have problem with your node graph and then you take a screenshot and show it to people online, it can be confusing when they see a connection like this. Another feature that people may miss is when you have a vector properties like this. You see the position properties is a vector because it have both x and y value. When you try to animate the properties, you will see that both x and y value is being animated at the same time. So if you want to animate each of the axis independently, you can do that by right clicking on the property here and go to the separate combined axis. Well, you can also right click on the properties in the timeline panel here and it will say separate combined axis and then clicking on it, it will separate each element in the vector into its own timeline. So you can animate x and y value independently. Now let's talk about a connection. A connection is simply, well, a connection between two junctions. You can create connection by clicking and dragging from one junction to another. You can also hold control key and then click on the node itself. This will automatically select the first output junction for you so that you can just drag from one node to another to quickly connect two nodes together. You can also connect the value without having to make the junction visible by dragging a connection directly to the property in the inspector panel. It will force that junction to be visible and then create a connection for you. And to remove a connection, you can just left click on a destination junction here. If you left click on the, I would say source junction, it will try to add new connection. But if you left click on the destination junction, it will simply destroy a connection. You can also right click on a connection and there will be option here to delete it. Or you can also hold control key by holding the right mouse button. This will show like this red circle, which allow you to cut the connection by dragging over a connection. Next, we're going to talk about sharing values. So if you have this value, maybe rotation property here, and you want to reuse it in other nodes, the first way to do it is by dragging the property here over to the graph panel, which will create a new node for you. Now you have to edit the value in this node, but you can also reuse this value elsewhere. The second way is to use value bypass. So you can right click on the properties and then click on toggle bypass. This will add new output for you which will contain the same values as the input property here. You can also click on the button here to toggle bypass on and off. Then you have a pin feature. So you can double click on a connection to create a new pin. And a pin is simply just an extra node that allows you to control the shapes of your connection. This is just used for organization. And then we have tunnels. When you right click on a connection, there will be an option for you to create tunnels. And that is basically a wireless connection that rely on a key. As long as you use the same key, you can send information across the graph, no matter how far away it is. And that can be useful when you have a larger, more complex node graph. Then we have frames. You can select multiple nodes just by click and drag on an empty space. And you can press Shift F to create a frame surrounding those nodes. And frame will also adjust itself based on the content inside. Now, if you want to drag a node outside the frames, you can click and drag the node and then press Shift. This will lock the frame so that it won't move it should allow you to move the node outside the frame. Then we have grouping. So I might need a separate uh, video to talk more about group in details. But in general, a grouping is just a way for you to group multiple nodes into one single node, which can be done by pressing Ctrl G. You can also right click and then press groups to do that. And when you have groups like this, you can then hold shift, then double click to enter the group. You will see on your graph panel here, it will show you where you are in the group hierarchy. If you want to exit the group, you can just click on the global and it will just zoom out to the global scope. You can also go to group by clicking on this go to icon here. It's quite small on the bottom right. Click on once and you will enter the group. There's a lot more to say about grouping. So I probably gonna put it in a separate video. You can also ungroup by pressing Ctrl Shift G which will expand the content inside the groups back to the global context. And these are the basic concepts when working with Node in Mr. Composer. So I hope it is useful for you. So as always, thank you for watching and see you in the next one.